Well, back to our main story this evening. No news of the world on tomorrow's newsstands, but papers in both the US and Britain are expected to contain new allegations on the hacking story that has dominated the last fortnight. Well, I've been speaking to Carl Bernstein, the investigative journalist and former Washington Post reporter who helped uncover the Watergate scandal which brought down Richard Nixon. He's a fierce critic of Rupert Murdoch, so I started by asking him why he thought he's such a malign influence on journalism. I think because his agenda, particularly at the low end of his newspaper empire, has never been about what good journalism is, which is to say the best obtainable version of the truth, but rather it's been about manufactured controversy, uh, about gossip, sensationalism, uh, invasion of privacy, and he's built his empire on that. It's a pernicious influence, and not only has it been built, this empire, on this low end of gutter journalism. The problem has been that the high end of what he's done, the Times of London, uh, Fox Network, et cetera, et cetera, has given him an excuse for this other stuff that very powerful people have gone along with uh, while not looking at what he's built it all in. We're used in Britain to hearing those arguments about the Murdoch empire. Are, are, are the American public as aware of those perceptions of him? We're talking about an individual who has managed to intimidate journalism he, on both sides of the Atlantic. That too many journalists have thrown in their lot with Murdochism, which is to say an agenda of this manufactured controversy and sensationalism. The thing about the tactics involved at the news of the world is it's not important whether uh, Rupert Murdoch knew about this particular illegal act or that one. Rather, this is a culture that was created in his newsroom by his him with his encouragement, and I don't mean just hacking, I mean a culture in which real news is secondary to this kind of trash. Your investigation, your famous Watergate investigation, um, was, it was a big team affair and you cleared a lot with, uh, with your editorial management at the time, but in terms of hacking itself, didn't you also gather information that people might have seen as private? There was one occasion on which I obtained the credit card records uh, of one of the Watergate figures and also a list uh, of some phone calls. I got it from a secondary source. Uh, I had some doubts about it at the time. Uh, we wrote in, in all the president's men that uh, we wondered what we would think ourselves if it was being done to us. Uh, we consulted with the lawyers at the paper at the time. Uh, the management was aware of it. Uh, so I don't think that the parallel quite exists. But look, this is not uh, an occupation of school uh, kids and altar boys and altar girls journalism. Uh, and sometimes we do go too far. Um, myself included have been up against the line on occasion, talking to grand jurors, which we did in Watergate, again with the permission of the lawyers. But, but was it the right thing to do? I think we had some doubts at the time. Do you think it's over? Do you think his influence and power has now been pricked? I think it's been pricked, to use your word. Uh, is it over? Uh, perhaps for him, it's certainly over in terms of the great power uh, and command that he has had in Britain over the political class. Uh, finally, uh, these cowardly figures, for the most part, are finally uh, an, taking the opportunity of, of this scandal to say, we're free. Uh, now, that doesn't mean his empire can't be rebuilt, and it may be. We've got a long way to go before we find out what has really happened. But one of the terrible things about this scandal is that it has made it much more likely that Rupert Murdoch is the reason that the press in Britain is now going to be regulated in some way, which is a terrible thing. But you don't think he holds the same kind of influence over politics and policy in America as he does over here? 
No, certainly not. But that's not to say he doesn't have huge influence in this country, uh, partly, and, and in New York State, by his ownership of, of, of the New York Post. He has huge influence in this culture. Uh, and, look, he owns Fox Network. Uh, Fox News has been a huge force in the politics of this country. And it has done it not by the best obtainable version of the truth, the standards of great reporting and great journalism. It's done it by ideologically driven reporting uh, that has very little to do with the best obtainable version of the truth. Carl Bernstein, don't forget you can keep up with the latest on the hacking scandal on our website, where you'll also find links to our new app for iPhones and iPads. The Channel 4 News app is available to download now, and it gives you access to all the day's news, our special reports, our blogs and catch-up programmes from the last seven days, and it's free. You can reach me direct on Twitter, at ChrisGM. We're back tomorrow at 20 past six. Until then, that's Channel 4 News. Have a very good evening.